River environments and we're looking at the hydrological cycle, which as the name suggests is all to do with water. Let's start with the definition. So the hydrological cycle is the global circulation of water. It is a closed system made up of both stores and transfers and we'll be looking at what those stores and transfers are in a great amount of detail. But what do we mean by a closed system? Well, it basically means that water can neither leave or enter the Earth's surface or atmosphere. What do we mean by transfer? Well, that's the movement of water between stores and there's lots of different transfers you need to know about. The first one is evaporation. Evaporation is when heat energy causes the temperature of the water to rise until it turns into steam and forms clouds. Next up is transpiration. If you do biology, you'll know all about this. It's where plants absorb water at their roots and then they transpire that water out of their leaves. And I'm trying very hard not to mention stomata, etc. because as geographers, you just need to know that that water evaporates from the surface of the plant's leaves. A term which you may have heard is the combination of those two terms and that is evapotranspiration. Condensation now, which is the opposite of evaporation, that's when that water vapour cools and condenses, turning back into a liquid and that's what you often find occurring at clouds. Now precipitation, that's effectively when water transfers itself from the atmosphere to the Earth's surface. So it includes things such as snow, rain, hail, that sort of thing. Slightly more complicated now, surface runoff, that's when water falls as rain and then it runs across the Earth's surface into surrounding streams and rivers. Through flow is when water drains through the soil due to the force of gravity. And again, that water will collect in streams and rivers. Groundwater flow occurs in rocks of the aquifer. Remember, an aquifer is a porous rock that allows water to drain through it. And in this way, water will reach seas, rivers and lakes. So those are the different types of transfers you need to know about. But what sort of human factors can affect the amount of transfer that occurs? Well, the first main one is urbanisation. When we build cities and towns and we pave and we concrete and we tarmac the surface of the earth, that basically increases the amount of runoff that occurs because obviously that water is not draining into the soil, it's not draining into the aquifers in the same way. And you will find that urbanisation does lead to an increase in the speed at which these water transfers occurs. Deforestation, that's another human activity. It means cutting down trees. Remember, we cut down those trees for building materials to provide land for farming, fuel, etc. What happens when we deforest is we lose the topsoil because it means we no longer have the tree roots holding down the soil and again, that will increase surface runoff. We've looked at human factors, but what about physical factors which affect water transfers? So the first one is rock type. You'll find that non-porous rocks will allow water to run off far more quickly because that water won't be soaking through the rock. Vegetation will also have a large effect. If you have more trees, then that will increase the rates of rain interception, as well as increasing the rates of transpiration and as a consequence, evapotranspiration. We'll touch a little bit on storage here because the third physical factor which will affect water transfers is global warming. As temperatures increase, you will find that the stores of ice and snow reduce. However, there'll be an increased transfer to our seas and oceans due to increased precipitation rates. We will now deal with water stores, and that's where water is stored within the hydrological cycle, and that falls into three broad categories. That will be land, sea, and the atmosphere. So we'll now go through those in a lot more detail. First of all, lakes. Now water is stored in lakes because it has a bottom made up of a non-porous rock, which means the water can't drain away. Rivers, hopefully are quite self-explanatory, as well as the sea. You find that soil is a good store of water because that water can't percolate through to the bedrock. Other examples of good water stores that you need to mention in your exam are groundwater, surface water, clouds, ice, and then that aquifer, which remember is a porous rock that allows water to drain through it. Sometimes it's useful to see a pictorial representation so you can understand how all the stores and transfers are linked. So because it's a cycle, it doesn't really matter where you start. But let's have a look down here. So heat energy causes the water's temperature to arise. It becomes steam, it evaporates up to form clouds. We said that any water coming from the clouds in the form of hail, rain, snow is examples of precipitation. So that's what we can see here. We can see ice falling over there. Through surface runoff, where that water runs over the Earth's surface, we know that water due to gravity will lead to rivers, lakes, streams, etc. So we can see how the water is returning to the sea as a store. Vegetation interception we already talked about, which is a physical factor affecting water transfers. Those trees will be absorbing that water at their roots, 
transpiration will be occurring as a result of that. Then down here we have examples showing through flow and groundwater flow. Remember, through flow is due to gravity where water drains through the soil until it reaches either a stream or a river. Groundwater flow occurs in rocks of the aquifer. Remember, that's your permeable rock and involves the transfer of water to lakes, rivers and the sea. So you can't see absolutely everything on this diagram, but, but I'm hoping you understand how water is stored and how that water is transferred. And remember, this is a closed system. Water is neither allowed to leave or enter the Earth's surface and atmosphere. So that brings us to the end of this video. Um, I hope you found it super helpful. Let me know if you want me to make more videos like this.